Good evening, people. Watch them in 65. Lisa Boyce here. Um, before I get into this article, and it's, it's kind of long, so brace yourself. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I implore anybody who's not saved to hurry up right now and get saved. Because today is the day of salvation. We are not guaranteed our last breath we're not guaranteed anything, but heaven or hell, and the choice is yours. I can give you the gospel, which is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for your sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day. The only requirement is to believe. And I had several verses specifying that. John 3.16 says, Whosoever believe in me shall not perish but have eternal life. That's a guaranteed ticket out of here to what's about to come. I'm going to read you this, and I'm going to tell you. This is off of uh, Unsealed. I told you the other day that there was something about Ginsburg's death that was actually prophetic. And this came out today. Now, like I said, it's rather long, so bear with me. Now, they're reading out of a different version of the Bible. Um, and for the time, sake of time, because I don't have my King James Version right here with me. Well, let me see something for a second. Let me see. I think I can get it. Get the verb right here because I don't like different versions of the Bible that they read out of so I think it's the living standard translation or something like that but this they start out with Revelation 12 7 through 12 let me find it and I will read from it for you it's Revelation 12, and it starts out with 7 through 12. And it says here, hold on one second, let me see. Let me get it for, okay. Okay. Revelation 12, 7 through 12, and it says here, And the war, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his, angel, and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the dragon was cast out, the old serpent, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, where deceiveth, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of Christ, and the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death, unto that death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. It goes on to say, in the context of Revelation 12, is the astronomical sign, which occurred on September 23rd and 24th of 2017. And the subsequent war in heaven that transpires in close proximity to the resurrection and rapture of the church, Revelation 12, 7, 9, and Revelation 12, 5. When we go up, the devil and his armies come down. 
God tips the scales in Michael's favor in the battle of the ages. The final heavenly battle ends an age-long war that has pitted angels loyal to God against those who have opposed him. Once the battle is over, the spiritual forces of darkness lose their access to the heavenly places once and for all. A strong Jewish tradition that traces back to the first few centuries A.D. as recorded in the Talmud is that whether or not Satan can accuse God's people is decided on Rosh Hashan, the Feast of Trumpets. It is very possible that this thinking factored into the composition of Revelation uh, chapter 12, given that Satan is called the accuser of our brothers when cast down. And the setting of this chapter can only be in the late summer or fall, the only time of the year when the constellation Virgo is clothed in the sun with the moon under her feet. Following the mega signs that have converged over the past century, including the Jewish Aleas, rebirth of Israel, conquest of Jerusalem, preparation for the third temple, and race toward a one world government and religion. The half past the past half decade have witnessed a massive flood of signs proclaiming that we have reached the very end. I want you to listen to this whole thing because this is talking about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And something that happened that I did not know. But I kept saying that I'm feeling something was wrong. The minute they pronounced her death, I knew something was prophetic about this. It says here, we have seen in 2020 demonstrates the quick clearing. And they got um, things that you can click on. Few realize just how quickly things are moving. The Revelation 12 sign should have been the ultimate wake-up call, but COVID-19 came along for good measure, setting the stage for global government, the mark of the beast, and the profound persecution of the believing remnant that will come to faith following the rapture. The Abraham Accord now puts into motion the scenario laid out by the prophet Daniel in Daniel 9 and by the Apostle Paul in 1, Corinthians, in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. For when they may say peace and security, sudden destruction comes on them as to veil on her who is with child, and they will not escape. The Abraham Accords is not the strengthening or confirmation of a covenant for seven years, but I have little doubt it is in fact the underlying covenant with many. All throughout the prophets, especially in Isaiah, this end times agreement is couched in terminology related to a false peace and a false sense of security. Isaiah 28, 15 through 18 and Daniel 8, 25. Israel should make peace with God rather than the apostate nations that disregard the everlasting covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaiah 27, 5, but nevertheless, the, the inverse of the Abrahamic covenant is now here. As of September 15th, and God himself will annul it. In Daniel 10, there's an interesting parallel account, or perhaps foreshadowing, of the war in heaven. And I'm going to read that out of the King James. It's Daniel, let me see. Well, let me read it a little bit here because it's being paraphrased a lot. Then he, con- uh, then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God. And your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. 
Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. So he said, Do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight again the, against the prince of Persia when I go. The prince of Greece will come, but first I will tell you what's written in the book of truth. In the book of Daniel, these angelic princes are mentioned several times. Gabriel is the courier, and Michael is the archangel, and a prince and defender of Israel. Other angelic powers reign over nations. Referred to in Daniel 10 as the princes of Persia and Greece. I just got a thing about... Putin's nuke could strike. I'm gonna I'll get into that. Compare Daniel ten to Revelation twelve, in which the archangel Michael battles Satan and cast him to the earth. Satan stands in the way of the church's departure. Revelation twelve four and Michael arises for battle, Daniel twelve one, Revelation twelve seven. Notice that Gabriel was enduring heavenly trench warfare, so to speak, for 21 days, three weeks. I'm getting at something here, so just bear with me for a minute. I'm going to link this in the description box so you can read it for yourself. Gabriel was enduring heavenly trench warfare, so to speak, for 21 days or three weeks before Michael intervened to finish the battle. This directly parallels the three weeks the prophet Daniel had been mourning. Daniel 10, 2, and 3. This three weeks of mourning and spiritual war came about in the third year of Cyrus. Daniel 10, 1. We are now in the third year since the Revelation 12 sign and Trump has frequently been likened to Cyrus by both Christians and Jews. He's even superimposed over Cyrus on a half shekel. Furthermore, this end time Cyrus has only been in office for three years and some change. Three years and some change, which strengthens the parallel. So let's turn the enemy's phrase as above, so below, against him. Daniel mourned for three weeks while God was interceding for him via Gabriel for three weeks. And then God sent Michael to tip the scales and win the battle. Adding weight to this parallel, Gabriel had been locked in battle with the angelic prince of Persia. Persia. Keep in mind, Persia. Persia is Iran. Modern day Iran. Iran is right now threatening to attack Israel and the United States in retaliation for the Abraham Accords and newly re reimpose e economic sanctions. I just read that the other week, the other day. In the context of the trenchless dealer, a theme repeated in Isaiah in conjunction with false peace and a covenant with death, Elam and media attack. Elam and media are also Iran. I'm going to read this verse out of Isaiah 21, 1 through 3. Isaiah 21, 1 through 3. It says here, the burden, and I'm reading this from the King James. I'm telling you, I don't like other versions. I just like the King James. I don't know why, but I just do. The burden of the desert of the sea as whirlwinds in the south pass through so it cometh from the desert from a terrible land 
A grievous vision is declared unto me. The, tre the treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam. Besiege, O Media. All the sign thereof have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold of me, and the pangs of a woman that travaileth. I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. That's Isaiah 21, 1 through 3. It goes on to say, now recall the general, recall that the general feast of trumpets, period, already profound, spiritual warfare connotations via Jewish tradition and Revelation 12. Given how late the hour is, it should then come as no surprise to you that Israel just entered a three-week lockdown beginning on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. I think this came out. I think it came out Friday. It was the first cent, uh, country in the world to enter a second lockdown over Corona. Then yesterday, the United Nations and the world, for that matter, was rocked. Now this was Friday. Rocked by the news that Supreme Court Justice Ruth Gader ben, uh, Ginsburg passed away. Her seat was the single most pivotal seat in the most powerful and influential earthly court on earth, the Supreme Court. The spiritual war type and shadow here are profound. I told y'all, before I go on with this, I had said I kept feeling it and I could not, I couldn't, I, you know, you're in a situation where you can't talk to nobody. My husband saved, but I couldn't talk to him about this because he wouldn't, he don't get it. All the time. Sometimes he does, sometimes he don't. So I was stuck. And I was bursting at the seams. You ever get like that? You got to tell somebody something, but you don't, you, you, got, you got no one. So I said, Lord, <laughs> do something. He gave me this. The spiritual war type and shadow here are profound. Jewish tradition makes a strong link between Yom Teru. Terura and the heavenly court's judgment for the coming year. The earth's most powerful court became split, signaling, signaling standoff on the Feast of Trumpets at the very beginning of the three week lockdown. The parallels don't stop here. Ginsburg was, of course, Jewish. And one of the most famous Jewish women in the United States, if not the world, because she represented the high court, the Supreme Court. Think of it. The most famous and powerful Jewish woman in the world, which she was. I mean, you can call it what you want, but she, I mean, she, she was a nutcase, in my opinion. I'm sorry that she suffered like she did, but she was crazy. I'm sorry, I don't approve of anybody taking the life of a child. I'm not going to celebrate that. I'm not going to approve of people saying that it's okay to abort a baby. I don't go for that. I don't care who it is. But people looked up to her because of that. The most famous and powerful Jewish woman in the world died in the most powerful and influential Gentile nation on earth. Chauffeurs could be heard sounding on the steps of the Supreme Court as mourners gathered for a vigil. It goes deeper than that. She died at age of 87, which number means Abram in the Bible. It's the same week as the Abraham Accords. And her name was Ruth. Now, my husband looked it up and said that wasn't her first name. She changed it. Her middle name was Ruth. 
Ruth was a Gentile from Moab who was married to an Israelite, Boaz, himself a type of Christ. She lived during the time of the Judges and Ruth. And Ruth was uh, the last book of the Bible before the age of the Judges ended. Ginsburg herself was one of the most, one of the most powerful judges on earth. And that she was. And that was unfortunate. But she made a lot of bad moves. Ruth Bader Ginsburg just died, disappeared in a like manner. The Ruth of the Bible represents Christ's Gentile bride. Christ's bride, the church, will soon disappear. Taken to heaven by our kinsman redeemer. And the era of the judges will be over. The justice that the church provided in the earth will be gone. And guess what happens next in the biblical narrative? The people cry for a king to reign over them. They reject God as king. They want to be like the nations. And so God steps back and let them have their wish. They are given Saul, a ruthless evil king and a type of the coming Antichrist. Saul was followed by David who represents Christ and his ancestor. It is on the throne of David that Christ will reign. Adding even more weight to all of this, there was a 4.5 magnitude earthquake, I think Friday, in the City of Angels in San Gabriel uh, Valley. Weeks ago, a massive Beirut blast went off immediately adjacent to the St. Michael district of Beirut. Two years ago, the massively destructive Hurricane Michael became the first Category 5 hurricane to strike the United States since 1992. And Hurricane Michael occurred at the same time as the possible sign of Revelation 12, 3 through 4. This brings us to the speculative Jewish prophecies from the Talmud. The Rabbi Shoshone and Rabbi Kaduri, they have profoundly pre uh, predictive power for what has transpired over the past two years. Kaduri predicted the start of a war in heaven on Rosh Hashan after Hebrew year 5781 or 5780. We're now in the Hebrew year 5781, as of Friday. After the government of Israel had fallen three times and been rebuilt three times during the time when both of the men being for power in Israel would be named Benjamin, the Messiah would be revealed. Now, I take these, and so do I. I'm reading from this, but I, I take these with a grain of salt. But their expectation for a period of time when the government would fall and be rebuilt three times with a standoff between the two Benjamins and the war in heaven on Rosh Hashan is fascinating. And it strengthens the case that the great heavenly war is here. Look at what's happening here on earth right now. You got a war between the Democrats and the Republicans. You got a war between good and evil. It's a pull. That's what's happening. I'm going to link this in the description box. Please, by all means, read this and comment about it. I'll be back later. Thank you.